Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen again. Uh, today we're going to be making two things that might end up on your Thanksgiving table. We are going to be doing delicata squash in the air fryer. A lot of you really like the air fryer. It's very easy, very healthy, and this is not a squash that a lot of people know how to cook. Um, so I am excited to show you that. Super easy. And then we are going to make the cranberry sauce that I've been making for my Thanksgiving guests for many, many years. We're gonna to try to do it quickly and we're gonna talk while we're doing it. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is take a whole bag of organic cranberries and rinse them well. And once you strain them, uh, they look like this. They're going in a saucepan. Then, my secret recipes. I figured that you, you know, if you're prepping for Thanksgiving, maybe you've got some champagne out, cheers to you. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for you watching this video. <laughs> no, I'm actually grateful for so much. I'm, I'm grateful to feel healthy. I'm grateful for all the loved ones in my life. And, um, but it's a good thing to bring that gratitude into your kitchen when you're cooking that uh, you have the ability to cook great food. Um, so, with that gratitude in mind, um, thinking you might have some champagne, I use a half a cup of fresh squeezed orange juice and then I take the rest of the champagne that I'm not drinking and I bring that up to uh, about a quarter, um, three quarters of a cup, sorry, three quarters of a cup. So I'm putting that in there. I'll put these two away. Then I'm using a, only a third of a cup of brown sugar. Um, you guys know me, I like to keep sugar out of recipes, but cranberries are really, really sour. And that uh, third of a cup is probably at least half of what most recipes will tell you to put in. And I think you can get away with just a third of a cup of sugar. I think it's, it still will be really tart, um, but it'll be lovely. Okay, so, so we've got the sugar. Um, then we are going to zest in some fresh ginger. This is what fresh ginger looks like. Um, you're just, if you're, if you're not used to using fresh ginger, um, you just want to cut away the, the tough skin on the outside like that. So you leave yourself a chunk like this so that you can zest that straight in to your pot. And um, somebody from the, the YouTube channel, I think it was Frank, um, thank you for commenting, he's enjoying my videos, and he was asking me, Terry, you know, tell me really truthfully, what are really useful tools to have in your kitchen? And I think that that's a good question because there are so many things that people try to sell you that claim to you know do this better and do that better and i think a lot of people can waste money on that stuff one thing that is not a waste is a zester like this i use it all the time i use it with cheese i use it with fruits vegetables um i use it a lot so a zester is a really good idea so i'm zesting um some fresh ginger in there uh maybe about a teaspoon I don't know it probably went through like a quarter of an inch I'm also I have some oranges here uh, that I'm gonna zest some orange um, into probably a whole orange um, I wanted to just thank you guys the, the people that have been commenting on uh, on the channel like everybody just you're such a nice community and I do read your comments as often as I can and um, it means a lot to me that you're enjoying it, that it's helping you maybe eat more healthfully and, uh, and that you're, you're liking our little chats. So keep your questions coming because I will try to answer them as I'm cooking. All right, so I've got some orange zest in there. Um, that's great. And then the last thing I do, and this is, um, a little, I don't know, little trick that I have. I get a little bit of cheesecloth and in my cheesecloth, I'm gonna put five big chunks of ginger. I'm gonna take a whole um, cinnamon stick and put that in there. I'm gonna take about 
oh, maybe 10 whole cloves. That's gonna go in there. And about three star anise. Those are gonna go in there. And lastly, I like to take a little bit of fennel seeds. And the reason I'm putting it in this um, cheesecloth is because I'm gonna let it sit in there. I'm gonna pull this up like this and then wind it around. I'm gonna tie it together because I don't want big chunks of ginger or big cloves uh, actually in my cranberry sauce because somebody might break a tooth and that would be bad. <laughs> um, so got my cute little, it's almost like a ghost. I know we're past Halloween, but okay. So that just, um, you're gonna bring that up to a boil. Um, so I'm gonna stir this around. So I've got my sugar down there in the liquid. I'll show you what that looks like, it just looks like that. Um, I'm here in Los Angeles today and it is raining. I don't know if you'll hear the rain. It's raining, but it's also hailing. That never happens in Los Angeles, very weird. So now I'm taking my little sachet of herbs, or not herbs, spices, I guess, and I'm sticking it in there in that liquid. Then uh, I'm just gonna let that come up to a boil. Let that come up to a boil and boil for about five minutes. Then I'm gonna have it simmer for another five minutes, and then it's done. It's so quick and easy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move this over here. Now we're gonna move on to our delicate squash. Isn't this the fastest Thanksgiving cooking you've ever seen? Okay, so these are washed squash. Washed squash, try to say that 10 times fast. Wash, 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 squash, wash, you can't do it. Uh, and then I'm gonna slice down the middle. It's got some seeds, those need to come out. So we'll be scooping out those seeds with a spoon. I was trying to think, okay, well, I, I actually have a cheat sheet of some of your guys' questions. Oh, okay. Sarah was asking me, what is my favorite cocktail uh, at the holiday season? And I can't remember if I've told you guys this before. Um, have I talked about the fig simple syrup? Okay, well, I've got the seeds out. Coming back to the cocktail. You wanna slice it about thin, about an eighth of an inch thick. So that's what that's gonna look like. A uh, little um, kind of, what is that? Ooh, there's thundering lightning, oh my gosh. So that's a good idea what that looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my, so we're gonna do this in the air fryer, get my air fryer basket. I'm just gonna start to throw those out in there. And someone, Frank, I think, it was Frank, uh, and I'm starting to hear my cranberries like pop a little bit. Not boiling yet, but I'm hearing them. What happens when they're done is they sort of pop open. Um, and then the pectin from the cranberries is what's gonna ultimately make it into that sort of gelatin -y kind of sauce when you, you know, let it set in the refrigerator after you cook it. So this is a Philips uh, Twin Turbo Star Technology Air Fryer. It's the larger one. And I love this one. I am not a spokesperson for them, so you can trust me. Actually, you could trust me anyway, because I never endorse anything that um, I don't really believe in. Anyway, so I love this air fryer. It's important, I actually think, because I've had other air fryers, and what I didn't like about them was not their capacity to do the air frying, it's the cleanup. And so often with these kind of um, instruments, you, you sometimes the thing, I don't know if you find this with like juicers or uh, food processors, sometimes the cleanup is such a drag 
that you kind of wish you hadn't used it in the first place. Um, and this machine, that's actually my favorite thing about it. Not only does it cook well, but all of the baskets come out of here very easily. You can throw them in the dishwasher or wash them by hand. Um, so that's what that looks like. This is a, a pretty big one. So I'm just going to do this one and I'm going to get it in there. Um, I'm going to spray this with either an olive oil or an avocado oil. Um, we'll put it in there first. Just in there like that. I'm going to spray that with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil. I don't have avocado oil or I would be using that. Then you just turn it on. I'm going to put it to 400 degrees for nine minutes and there it goes and there it starts. Um, so there you have it. Uh, meanwhile, I could be cleaning this out and um, oh, I'm going to turn this down now a little bit and I'm going to let that simmer. Um, so that's it. Look at how fast we were able to do two things for our Thanksgiving table. Um, very excited about Thanksgiving coming up. I think it's one of my favorite, favorite holidays. Um, what else can I tell you about this squash? Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. So, you know, I'm going to cook these two today. And what's great about this uh, squash is that you can eat it uh, just right away, obviously. It would be a, a great... Uh, thing to put on your Thanksgiving table. Super healthy, obviously so easy, couldn't be easier. When you take that out of the fryer, you can put a little sea salt on it. It may not need it because of the caramelization it's gonna get while it's heating and cooking. Um, you could also try truffle salt on it. Um, and if you make too much, this, you can, you can keep this in your refrigerator for up to a couple days. You can reheat it in the microwave uh, for like a minute. Um, you can chop it up even smaller and put it into a salad. Um, you can even chop it up small and put it with a, like a Greek yogurt. Um, that would be a great breakfast food because it has a really lovely sort of sweetness to it. Um, people don't, I think people think of squash, like you look at this and you think, you think you should hit someone on the head with it. That's what you think. No, <laughs> where am I going? Um, no, you think it's like a, it's like a gourd that should just sit as a decoration. But this is maybe one of my favorite um, squash. So I'm just going to chop the rest of these, and I'll, I'm going to. I don't want to keep you here too long, um, but I'm going to do a second and a third batch. Okay, so the cocktail. All right, so, wow, that was thunder and lightning. Did you hear it? Oh my gosh. It's like live, live with Terry Hatcher in the LA thunderstorm. That's a rarity. Um, okay, I wanna keep my eye on the clock for this. Uh, okay, cocktail. Um, is I love figs in the fall season. Um, so get yourself a basket of black figs, uh, wash them, put them in a saucepan like this with a little water and just let them cook down forever and ever and ever. Um, you know, keep the water in there. You don't want them to dry out. You're just trying to get the fig really mushy and then, you know, mush it all around and you're going to end up straining that juice. And basically what you're having is, is just like steeped fig. Um, but without the pulp and without the skin. Then you take that and you use a simple syrup proportion, which is one to one. So, um, although sometimes I do a little less, but I think it's one cup of whatever, if you're using water, to one cup of sugar. And you cook that down for about three minutes and then you have a simple syrup. So then you have your, and you can do that by the way, you can make simple syrup with like Earl Grey tea, um, you, with sage, uh, and, and then you have this sort of flavorful simple syrup and then you augment that into your cocktails. So I like to take one part of this big simple syrup, one part of fresh lemon juice, and one part tequila. And you shake that up with ice in a cocktail shaker and serve it up uh, like martini.
delicious and it has just has that warm fall fig flavor fall fig flavor hashtag fall fig flavor okay um this has got five more minutes this has got a couple more minutes i'll be back and this is what it's looking like in the air fryer they're crisping up and caramelizing nicely okay so cranberry sauce is done and we're just going to pour it out of the pan into a bowl pyrex something that can take some heat it smells great and Uh, one of the reasons that you don't want to cook it too long is because you don't want to destroy that shape of the uh, cranberry. You don't want to cook it down so much that you just have mush. So what I like to do is I actually leave my little sachet of um, spices in there and I keep it in there while I'm letting this cool. I keep it in there the whole time until right before I'm about to serve it. So I'm, I would let this cool at room temperature and then you can cover it if you have a glass cover or you can use um, saran wrap and keep it in your refrigerator. Um, you want to serve it cool uh, with your dinner. Um, it's so great on the turkey if you're doing meat, but it's also good mixed with the mashed potatoes. Um, it's just a beautiful part of a Thanksgiving meal. So. That's your uh, cranberry sauce. And I ended up keeping um, the deli delicata <laughs> squash uh, in the fryer for about 10 minutes. That is looking really beautiful. You can see um, how it's got a little browning on it. Um, oh, it's so good. Oh, that's so good. Something like this is also great for like a, a substitute for popcorn. It's got that, that same sort of luscious, kind of crunchy, the skin gets the crunch to it, but the squash part is so tender. This is um, some fleur de sole that I actually got from Paris when I was there with my dad a few years ago. So I would put a little bit of that on there, but that is um, just delicious. Look how cute that is. Who knew that your food could be cute? Imagine if we put a little cranberry sauce right next to that. It would be beautiful. All right, so happy Thanksgiving. I'm gonna try to get back to you with a couple more Thanksgiving videos before the day in case you wanna use them. And um, thank you for joining me. Subscribe to my channel and keep your comments coming. Have a great day. Be grateful.